As you begin talking to friends, families, work colleagues, or even people in the financial industry, you may hear certain terms thrown around, such as random walk theory and the efficient market hypotheses. So you need to understand what they mean and where they fit in. These two theories are banded around mostly by academics. And if we look at random walk theory, the two tenets are that stock price movement is serially independent. So they assert that the price of a stock is random. It essentially moves around with no basis and no relation to its historical price. Now, as we will see in the future, when we study charts in detail, that history does have actually an effect on stock price. And you will see with support and resistance, trend lines, uh, and the interaction of stock price in market cycles is very much an actual factor of the way the market works. In terms of the efficient market hypotheses, that talks around the area the prices fluctuate randomly around an intrinsic value. However, when we see the boom and bust scenarios that have happened to us in 2008, 2009, but also in 2000 and in 1987 and in the early 70s, you see in these boom and bust situations that they don't fluctuate randomly around an intrinsic value. Essentially, there are so many factors in the marketplace that can't be accounted for in modern economic theory. So, although economic theory is all well and good, we see that it holds very little bearing in the actual market itself. And what we will be studying is what actually happens in the market and how to make money out of those various actions and forces that exert themselves in the marketplace. The efficient market hypothesis also recommends a buy and hold as opposed to try and beat the market. Now, if you want to have a very hands-off approach to investing, then it may well be worth purchasing a, something like an index tracking ETF, where at the bottom of a bear market would be the ideal price, place to get in and just buy and hold. However, as we know, the S&P since the early 70s has produced around about a 6 to 7% return investment year on year on average. Now, 6 or 7% isn't going to make you uh, a millionaire until you retire, depending on your age, but we're talking 30 to 50 years before that happens. That's really not an ideal situation to be in. So this course will be all about beating the market beating the market averages. The thing is, the more you get drawn into academic debate about economics, the less time you can devote to making money in the marketplace. Technical analysis can be applied to all markets, foreign exchange, futures, commodities, and stocks. This training course will focus its study on fundamentals and technicals in the area of stock prices and the stock market using potentially tools such as options, shorting, and buying long, simply buying stocks. So to summarize this section, we're not going to polarize ourselves in the fundamental camp or the technical camp. In reality, it's a combination of both. In terms of fundamental analysis, great companies have great fundamentals. Great fundamentals in general means higher company valuations. And also, the higher the company value, the higher the stock price. That's basic business. However, on the technical side, great fundamentals do not always mean large moves in stock price. There are too many external factors that can influence the stock price. We want to use supply and demand integrated with fundamental analysis. So we'll use both. Technical analysis helps to analyze the supply and demand through price, stock price, volume, and sentiment, the psychological side of the market. So I hope this has given you a good overview of the different approaches to the market and set the tone for what we're going to learn 
in future study. We'll have sections on fundamental analysis, both looking at the overall context and friendliness of the economic environment to business. It's very important that we understand that. And also how to value a company, things to look for in great companies. If you're going to choose two stocks to buy, one company is losing money, but the stock chart looks great. And another company is making a lot of money and expanding rapidly and the stock chart looks great. Which one are you going to choose? That's why you need to understand fundamental analysis. However, we are also going to use and focus on technical analysis. We need to understand supply and demand, how that affects stocks, how that will affect the marketplace and how to understand what a great looking stock chart really is, what indicators really make a difference and how you can use them to make money in the marketplace. Wow, you're still here. Well, I guess you must have liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. It will really help the channel out. And click subscribe if you want to be notified about future stock investing lessons, strategies and software videos. Finally, don't forget to leave a comment or question below and I will reply.